Hello guys, so in this video I want to talk about dual vector spaces. Um, I didn't prepare for this video, so I'm going to just talk about them. So let's start uh, with a regular vector space. Instead of talking about abstract vector space V, I'm going to take a concrete vector space, which is R to the N. And for this vector space, I'm going to choose a specific basis, which is going to be the span of the vectors A1, E1, up to EN. And just a short reminder, if you have seen this before, then Rn is going to be a set which contains the common vectors of the form A1 up to An, where each of your entries Ais is going to be a real number, so Ai is going to be, belongs to R. And then, how do we define uh, Ei? I'm going to show you as an example. Ei is going to be a common vector where like all entries are zero except I have one and I have entry is equal to one. So for example, E1 is going to be one, zero, and all other entries are going to be zeros. So the question is, if I have this vector space, this is a concrete vector space that we can visualize. Uh, so for example, when uh, N is equal to three, yeah, sorry for the powers, when N is equal to three, I'm going to have R3, which is a three-dimensional space. And then we can literally visualize that vector space is going to be uh, this space. So it's going to be x, y, z. Uh, I don't remember how it's called. It's not like Cartesian coordinates, but three-dimensional Cartesian coordinates. OK, so then the question is going to be, uh, what is going to be the dual vector space? So in other words, I'm going to indicate a dual vector space as the uh, star. And uh, like how to visualize it, or what what is like a dual vector space? How can we can understand it? One of the way to understand the dual vector space, uh, or in general understand the vector space, is to understand to give like certain basis. So it's just because as uh, when we have a basis, then we know uh, how to we can kind of basically produce and generate any possible vector in the vector space. So first, let me. Uh, define this dual vector space as a set. And I'm going to define in a real weird way, uh, but I'm going to explain what I'm going to, going to write right now. So let's consider the dual vector space as a set of all linear functionals on the vector space V, where like we're going to take them in real numbers. So in other words, uh, V dual is going to be the set of all linear functionals uh, on V. So what do you mean by that? Uh, I'm going to take my vector space V and what I'm going to do, I'm in this vector space V, I'm going to choose some vector. So linear, uh, so like functional on this vector space, that means every time I'm going to choose this vector, I will consider the map and this map I'm going to call functional, and let's call it, for example, like alpha. So alpha in this case is going to be my functional. And my vector space is going to be mapped to the real numbers. So in other words, every time what, what, does, what functional uh, like does, it takes the vector, new vector space, and it maps this vector to some number. And how to indicate this, I don't know, like we're going we to say, uh, so let's see, we take the vector space V and we're going to, I'm going to just write uh, like a scalar. Scalar. Okay, so, and this is going to be a functional. Lin uh, linear functional basically means that, um, I'm going to write this property here, so linear. It means if I'm going to take the functional Ah, sorry, yeah, it's a scalar, and here I can actually say the scalar is going to be equal alpha of v. So it's going to be scalar alpha of v. So linear means if I'm going to take the functional of the sum of two vectors, then it's going to be equal to the uh, sum functional. So it's going to be alpha v1, alpha v1, and alpha of v2. And also through the same for the scalar, so if I'm going to take alpha of some scalar c times v, that is equal to c alpha of v. 
Yeah, so the combination of being functional and linear, and we're going to have a linear function. Uh, then one of the discussions that we can do, like why the set is going to be a vector space. And the property that we need to check, as soon as we have a set, like some sort of set, and let's uh, this set, let's say we do. This set is going to be a vector space if you're going to choose some linear function alpha, you're going to choose some linear function beta. And what we're going to do, we're going to create a new linear function, uh, a new kind of element, alpha plus beta. And we want to show that this alpha plus beta is also is going to be a linear function. So in other words, our set is going to be closed under certain addition. And you can easily check that if we know how to define, uh, if we can evaluate alpha at v, beta at v, then we will be able to evaluate alpha plus beta at v. Because by definition, we're going to just to take that it's going to be equal to alpha at v plus beta at v. And using this addition, in the same way we can define scalar multiplication, I can show that this is going to be a vector space. Okay, so, so far we did a really good job because we define a v-dual as a like all linear function of the vector space, which are just assigning uh, to your vector some number, and then what we're going to obtain, uh, we're going to add additional structural linearity, and we're going to obtain a vector space. Uh, then the next like question is going to be, uh, I have this vector space, what is going to be the basis of this vector space? Uh, but before that, let's just come back to our example over here. I'm going to put this example in this small little cloud. And uh, let's consider uh, some example of some functional. An example is going to be that, for example, I'm going to take vector A with coordinates 1, 1, 1. And I will take the linear functional L, which is going to take your vector A. And the result of this linear functional is that you're going to add all your components. So this A has three components, 1, 1, 1, 1. So if I'm going to add them, then the result of this linear functional is going to be equal to 3. So alpha is going to be linear functional of the vector, which is going to add all its components. So if you're going to have the vector, uh, let's say, B, this coordinates, uh, 1, 1, 0, then the result of alpha of B is going to be equal to 2. So that's going to be linear functional. Uh, let's see how many minutes do I have. Okay, I have 8 minutes, so possibly I will stop here, and next time in my next video I'm going to discuss what is going to be basis for this uh, dual vector space. If you like, the, if you kind of like this video and you enjoyed that I came back to the actual blackboard, please like and, uh, if you're not subscribed also, like, like and subscribe. And um, I don't know, just share this video to someone like who will probably appreciate the knowledge of what is like there's a blue vector space. And if you want to see the next video, let's say I want to get, let's start with a small number, like 20 likes under this video. And if I'm going to get 20 likes, I'm going to record about um, what is it going to be the basis for the video. Okay, so thank you for watching and have a nice day.